Amen. Thank you, Sister Kiana. She, um, I don't know. It seems like you were peeking into my message. And um, good morning. Oh, my God. I am so, so glad to see you. I'm glad to be here. It's, it's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Let's give a hand to the mothers. Oh, my God. You know, um, God has laid some things on my heart, and um, I'm just glad to be able to share them with you all, and um, my heart is full, and I just want to let the sisters know, the mamas know, how meaningful they are to their families. If you would stand with me, we'd like to read just two scriptures. If you can, please stand with me. And... um, The title of our sermon this morning is going to be My Three Mothers. (laughs) My Three Mothers. And uh, but before we do, let's read Genesis chapter 3 together, verses 20 and 21. Verse 20. Now the man named his wife Eve. You can read right along with me. Because she was the mother of the living. And the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. You may be seated. Um, The Lord brought to my mind, how many of you all remember my three sons? (laughs) Some of you all are not old enough to remember my three sons. There it is. And uh, my three sons was a series um, that uh, I used to look at as a kid of a man. It goes in music. You hear the music? He, he, he was a, a widower, and he was um, an aeronautical engineer raising three sons. And he had an uncle named Charlie that helped him. And I understand this was a staple program back in the 60s and the 70s. And uh, as a matter of fact, ABC and CBS had this program as a cornerstone in their lineup. And uh, as I was thinking about that, I thought about, hmm... My three mothers. My first mother is my biological mother. Her name is Mrs. Elsa Nelson Yarber. And then my second mother, I'll use the number, but she's my mom, is my mother-in-law. And my mother-in-law is here with us today. This is... This is Mrs. Arkawan and Allen. This is Regina's mom. You'll hear about her. Great lady. And then my third mother, not technically, is my lovely wife, Regina. But like I said, she's not technically my mom, but you know what I mean. She's the mother of my children. And I hope that as I I share with you this morning, that you can glean some things from what I'm going to say, from what the Lord has taught me, has given me through these women. And I'm quite sure as I share this, you will be thinking about women in your life, mothers in your life that has had a major impact because I thank God for mothers. As we read in the text in Genesis chapter 3, that Adam, it was amazing to me that God gave Adam the right to call his mother, his, his, his wife Eve. God did that. But she's the mother of the living. Brothers, can you imagine Adam in the garden? Nine months pregnant. With his stick digging in dirt, planting in the garden. Nine months pregnant. Can you imagine? God was good to us, brothers. He gave us a helper. He gave us a woman. And she's the mother of our children. And if it wasn't for her, how could we have populated? But God used her. I am so, so thankful. So let me start out this message by talking about my mother. My mother's not here today. My mother's still living. She's 92 years old. 
And it's a blessing for me to even say that out of my mouth that my mother is 92 years old. And um, my mother, um, did you throw this? There she is. That's mom. <laughs> and that's her, the young lady, and that's my dad. And uh, my mother is just this beautiful brown skinned woman, she, real short. You know, I remember as a kid, I'm 13, 14, I would say, Hey, mom, how's the weather down there? She's a short lady, you know what I mean? And, um, uh, but my mother, as you see, she had long hair. And, and, and as a little boy, uh, we didn't have to sit down in the seats with seat belts or car seats as a little kid. But I would stand behind her while she was driving, and I would just stroke her hair. Oh, I used to love it. I used to love it. And uh, my mother, she grew up on the south side of Chicago in a community called Morgan Park. Believe it or not, she was, she was one of eight as well. Seven siblings. She has two siblings still living. She's the second oldest. And um, her father was a hardworking man, politician. As a matter of fact, her brother, um, Senator Emel Jones, was, was a politician, is a politician today. And she married to my father, uh, Aaron. And uh, she gave birth to four children, of which I am the youngest. And uh, as I said, she's 92 years old. She, my mother, uh, a little while back, had a couple strokes. And at that age, in the 90s, you know strokes can have a real serious impact on an elderly person. So she has uh, some trouble with her speech. Uh, she has um, some dementia. But one thing I love about my mother, I can go see her today, and she just loves to laugh and joke. <laughs> um, her nickname, mom's nickname is Kitty. And when she was, when I was younger, me and my stepfather used to, used to tease her because she was so prissy. You know, some ladies are just, I'm, I'm, she's just so prissy. She's walking around like she's holding a teacup or something. And, um, and uh, like I said, her name was Kitty. And she, she likes to laugh and joke, and believe it or not, you all, I'm going to let you in on something in case you just don't know. My wife, Regina, her nickname is Kitten. And when they get together, they like two little kittens. They're laughing and playing and giggling, and I just love that. And as a child, I can remember my mother, she was soft-spoken. I, I, I really don't remember my mother scorning me anything. She was a tender woman. She, um, she gave me space. Mom would let me um, do what I did, and that wasn't always good. But, but she wasn't really hard on me as a mother. She wasn't all over me, and I, I was a kind of independent, spirit-minded kid, so I, I, I love that. But my mother, as um, days gone on, and I, I watched things in the house, and my mother had trouble in her marriages. And some of you mothers right now are having troubles in your marriage. And um, actually from my father, my mother divorced when I was about 10 or 11 years old. It broke my heart. I love my dad. I just love my dad. And then she remarried to my stepfather. But I'll tell you something, my brothers and sisters. I don't know what your broken is, is in your family with your mom or your dad. But what God did with my brokenness, he used it to teach me some lessons. And one lesson I learned is that I didn't want to treat a woman like that. I literally used to tell my friends, if I'm going to treat a woman like that, I'm not going to marry her. Because a woman who is the mother of living should be treated well. Women should be honored. She's a gift to us. And we should honor our, our women, our wives, and our sisters. We should honor them. They're not to be treated bad. If you would bring up the next slide. In Malachi, this reminds me of Malachi chapter 2, verse 13 through 16. I'll just read it. It goes like this. It says, and this is another thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and sighing, because he no longer gives attention to the offering or accepts it with favor from your hand. Yet you say, for what reason? He's talking to the men of Israel. 
Because the Lord has been a witness between you and your wife of your youth against whom you have dealt treacherously. Though she is your marriage companion and your wife by covenant. He says, but not one has done so who has a remnant of the spirit. And why the one? He was seeking a godly offspring. And so God says to the men of Israel, he says, and I believe he's speaking to us men. Because you, you, you can't separate motherhood from men. She comes from us, and she's given to us by God as our mates. And he says, be careful about your spirit, and see that none of you deals treacherously against the wife of your youth. Now, to deal treacherously is to be unfaithful to her in all the ways you can imagine. To be untrustworthy, to be deceptive. Another way of putting it is to actually live with her as though you live in, in covertness. You got stuff going on undercover. You know what I'm talking about? He said, don't deal with her in a treacherous way. He says, for I hate divorce. We know the scripture gives a reason for divorce, but the Lord says, I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel, and him who covers his garment with violence. Whether it's violence, physically, violence, emotionally, mentally, he says, who covers his garment with violence, says the Lord of armies. So be careful about your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. Oh, I'm so thankful for that scripture. I've read it many times. Because as men, oh God, as men, we have to guard our hearts. We have to guard our hearts with the woman that God has given us. We have to make sure we put ourselves in check with God so that we can be the kind of men to her that we need to be. You know, I think of another scripture in Psalms 128. It says, blessed is the one that fears the Lord. And down to drop down to verse 3, he says here, he says, his wife will be like a fruitful vine in his house. Oh, brothers, how many of you want a fruitful vine growing in your house? And then he, was, he said, and his children should be like olive branches around the, or plants around the table. Woo! That's God's desire in the home. So, brothers, how we treat our women is absolutely critical. We can grieve God by how we treat our mothers, our wives. God wants us to treat them with kindness. You know, my mom, as a profession, my mom was a professional seamstress. Well, my mom could sew. I remember being in high school, my mom with... Um, she sold me this, juke, this blue jean outfit. I mean, I had some nice blue jean slacks. I had a blue jean shirt. She even made me a blue jean vest. And I was strutting in the high school. My mama made this. I mean, my mama made this. And I remember a good friend of mine, he, um, we ran together, and he said, man, can your mama make me a suit? I said, yeah, my mama can make it. She made him a, a nice wolf, uh, 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 tongue green, uh, three-piece suit. I mean, he was laid. He was laid. And it makes you feel good, you know, your mama did that. Walk in the community and say, hey, yeah, my mama can do that. So thankful for my mama. She taught me so much. She was just good to me. And so what are some of the things that I, I gleaned from Mrs. Elsa Nelson Yarber? One of the things that, it was kind of like an indirect hit. You know, sometimes mothers do things and it doesn't seem to be like they're doing things just outwardly, but it's just the way they are. It just happens to you. And one of the things my mom did, she built my self-worth. You know, mamas, it's so good when your sons and your daughters hear you compliment them. It's so good when they hear you bragging on them. As a matter of fact, my mom used to brag on me. I was in high school, and 
uh, I was playing the bass, and she would brag about, oh, Lamont's still on the honor roll. <laughs> oh, and I used to tell my mom, 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 don't, don't, don't do that too much. <laughs> I don't want people to think that, you know, I got a head, you know, big head, because that's not where I'm at. But she would be bragging with me. But down deep inside, she made me feel so good. And that's what mamas bring, that tenderness, and they say things in a tender and loving way that picks you up, makes you feel like somebody important. That's what my mom would do. Y'all know how. I mean, have y'all been to graduations? And you all ever watch some moms at graduations? I mean, her daughter, son, is strutting down the aisle to get the certificate, and she said, that's my baby. I mean, she just so happy. I mean, the, the, the child could have just got by with just D's, but that's my baby. <laughs> well, mamas can do that. Mamas can push you. Mama can encourage you. And my mama did that to me. She did that to me. And even though my mother and my father divorced, listen up, mothers, my mother never said things about my father to me that would make me want to not have a relationship with him. That's important. Oh, my God. My mama never discouraged because I love my daddy. She never discouraged me. But she always, she would tell me the truth. She didn't shun the truth now. But she left the door open for me to make the choice. Mamas, that's important. You might be in a situation where you're estranged from your husband. But always remember, though you are estranged, that still his kids. And she did that for me. That was Important. The second thing my mom did, <laughs> my mom took me, taught me how to take care of myself. <laughs> Mama taught me how to take care of myself. As a matter of fact, believe it or not, you all, I used to just love scrambled eggs. I mean, I loved them. My mom one time went into the hospital and she said, well, when I get out of the hospital, I'm going to make you seven scrambled eggs. <laughs> oh, you know, I was... I want scrambled eggs. But you know what my mama did, too? She taught me how to cook my own scrambled eggs. As a young boy, I knew how to cook my own scrambled eggs. I put scrambled eggs with bologna on it, scrambled eggs with bacon, with sausage. I put scrambled eggs with hot dogs. I put scrambled eggs. You name it, I had scrambled eggs on that sandwich. Because my mama taught me that. And mothers, there's so much you can impart to your kids. You'd be surprised what they catch. And then my mama at a very young age, because you, you know kids, we like mama to do stuff for us. I mean, sometimes we get grown and want mama to do stuff for us. But as a kid, you know, you want mama to do your stuff. But my mama said, boy, you old enough. I ain't washing your clothes. My mama taught me how to use that washing machine. Now, when I was growing up, we didn't have the washing machines we got today. We didn't have those old important meat tags. You push a button, two, two rinses, four washes, warm, hot, cold. We didn't have that. We had a tub with a ringer on it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? A tub with a ringer on it. And we moved up in life when we got an automatic ringer. And I would, have to, I would have to get the water from the, the, the basement and the sink and, and have a hose on it and get that water into the tub, wash my clothes after a stop, put the clothes in the wringer and wring it out, then let all the water out of the tub, pour new water in the tub, put them in there, let them rinse, and wring it out again. And then I could hang them up or put them in the dryer. It's easy today, y'all. Young folks, don't be complaining when mommy make you wash your own clothes. It's easy today. And then if the washer didn't work, 
My mama taught me how to use a washing board. Anybody know how to use a washing board? I mean, I remember the day that something wrong with the washing machine. I don't know. But I would actually go in the basement sink. <laughs> I'd be washing them clothes. My mama taught me that. And then lastly, and once again, I say to your mothers, impart to your children, if you don't think you know much, you'd be surprised at what you know. Whatever you know, impart it to your children. But being a seamstress, she taught me how to sew. By the way, when I was in college, I couldn't believe how many people couldn't, didn't know how to wash their clothes. I was literally shocked. I was like, really? And I was saying, I'm so glad my mama told me how to wash clothes. I ain't got to pay nobody to wash my clothes. I know how to wash my own clothes. But she also taught me how to sew. Um, I never learned how to use a sewing machine, but uh, you know how boys are. We play a lot of sports, and we run around a lot. I mean, we'll take a brand new pair of plans, and they're just wearing holes in and wear them out. You know? My mama taught me how to put up my own hem in my pants. She taught me how to put the thread in the needle. She taught me how to use the thimble. <laughs> she taught me how to make a straight line when I put a seam in. And, and, and then she taught me how to, when the seam was finished, to tie the knot. <laughs> Y'all think that ain't important? Try and not do it. Your pants will be dragging on the ground again. My mama taught me that. I'm so thankful for my mama. So thankful. As when I went, went away to college, guess what my mama gave me? She gave me a little sewing kit. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if something got torn, I knew how to sew it up because mama taught me that. I'm so thankful for my mama. The next person I want to talk to you about is my mother-in-law. Hmm. Hmm. Mrs. Arca Juana. Alan. Yeah. That's her in her young days, beautiful woman, always beautiful. She's beautiful on the outside, and she's also beautiful on the inside. If you would get to know my mom, I, I love my mother-in-law. Um, my mother-in-law also grew up in Chicago, but she grew up on the far south side of Chicago in a place called Altgale Gardens. She had uh, one brother who's passed on, and she has a living sister. But this is, this is a story that, that gets me. I remember one day sitting down at the dining room table, and my mother-in-law asked me, she said, Lamont, who's your father? That's a good question, mothers. <laughs> she said, who's your father? I said, my father's Aaron Henderson. Aaron Henderson is your father? Aaron Henderson and his brother David used to come over my house. With my brother, because my, my parents grew up in the garden too, my mother, my father did. He used to come over the house and they used to play music. And she said, Your daddy played the bass and his pants would always fall down. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that, that really started a connection like, wow. Uh, I believe you're the second oldest, right, Mom? Second oldest. And our father was a technician, like he repaired TVs and radio, mother was at home. Um, she's been married to my father-in-law, Charles E. Allen Sr., for over 60 years. Mm -hmm. And remember, my father-in-law, he's in the um, rehab center now. He's, he's had some challenges, and he's 91 years old. Amen. But you see, God blessed my mother-in-law, gave her four children, of which Regina is the third, third oldest. And um, my mother-in-law has just been a blessing to me. She's just been a woman who um, just stood out in so many ways. And I must tell you, the first thing I must tell you about my relationship to my mother-in-law is this. I don't have mother-in-law issues. That's a blessing. 
me and my mother-in-law, it's not that we haven't had any difference or conversations that were, were, you know, indifferent to each other. But it's just that, and I want to talk about this a little later on. My mother-in-law has always loved me. Even when I was dating Regina, even when we were thinking about getting married, my mother-in-law was always engaged in conversations with us. She's always had something uh, encouraging to say to me. As a matter of fact, she's a very encouraging person. And I want to say this to her in her presence. If you come to my mother-in-law's house, I don't care how bad a day she had yesterday, you say, Mom, how you doing? She said, I'm good and getting better. <laughs> That's one of her favorite lines, and I just love it. She has such a positive attitude about life. She doesn't let things get down. I've watched her. I've watched her over the years. She stays as an encourager. And I remember when me and Regina were, were uh, uh, getting ready to get married. You know, me and Regina were, were real young. <laughs> I was 21, y'all. And my sweetheart, she was 18 going on 19. People would tell me, man, you, you have robbed the cradle. I'm taking the cradle too, bro. Don't leave the cradle out. And some people thought we were young. But Regina and I were foolish enough to believe that God could keep us. We were foolish enough to believe that. Here we are, 43 years later. God did that. God is able to keep, whether you've been married when you got 30, 40, or 50, it takes God to keep a marriage going. But one of the things that I learned from my mother-in-law, and that is Christ. You see, when I met my wife and I would come by the house, I have to be honest, I wasn't looking for Christ. I was looking for Regina. And if most of you brothers be Christian or not, you be honest, you know you weren't looking for God, you were looking for huh. And some of us had some hood rat things on our mind. You know what I'm talking about? See, that's the reality. I wasn't looking for Christ. But down in my heart as a young boy, I always yearned for God, but I didn't know who he was. God knew how to get your attention on <laughs> He said, Regina alone. He got my attention. And you see, I would come by the house and, and see them. And my mother-in-law, she is so on fire for God. I mean, she wants to talk about, she talks to everybody about God. She wants to tell them about the love and goodness of God. That's how she was always was. It wasn't nothing phony about it. It was just in her soul. That's just how she's been. And so we would come by there and sit and talk. And I remember one time I'm sitting at the, uh, the kitchen or dining room table. And she turns, she looks at me, she says, Lamont, do you know Jesus Christ? Well, I had to come back with an answer, y'all. <laughs> so I gave the best I knew how. I says, well, ma'am, I, I don't go to church. <laughs> My mother lost two wives for that answer. She looked at me and she said, I ain't talking about church. I want to know, do you know Jesus? <laughs> Within two or three weeks or so after that, here's Lamont walking to church, or going to church with the family. <laughs> I'm going to church with the family. About two weeks into that, I'm walking down the aisle to receive Jesus. I have to tell y'all, I wouldn't even be here but for my mother-in-law. Her testimony. Mama's testimony. She's bold. She I remember sometime we would call over at the house and to talk to mom. And guess what? In her elder years, my mother-in-law was getting up at 5 o'clock. Reading and praying. She loved God. She gets up early. 
Sometimes she called Regina around 7. Regina, uh, mom's already up. I asked her this morning. I said, mom, uh, Regina, uh, what time you, did you let your mom know what time you're going to pick her up? And my, my wife says to me, oh, no, no, mom, she's been ready since 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she's an early bird. But she's been bold. I, I remember the story, mom. I, I thought I was there, but... Um, Perhaps I wasn't. But I remember the story. Regina and their family, they grew up Catholic. And I would at times attend a Catholic church service with them. And you know, understand how Catholic services go, right? I mean, there's a program to the service. I mean, there ain't no sharing time. I mean, there's no time to sit and talk. You, know, you just go through the service. I didn't grow up Catholic. I didn't know all the rudiments to it. But I just went along with it when I was there, right? But I understand my mother-in-law, wow, talking about being bold for Jesus. She literally stood up in the service and shared with the congregation about Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's mom, bold, loving, unashamed. I'm thankful for you, mom. Thank you for your boldness. And lastly, about mom, she, um, one of her, her going traits is, if you get to know her, get around her long enough, my mother-in-law is a very loving person. Me and my mother-in-law have had long conversations about the Bible. Some we agreed about, some we didn't. But my mother-in-law always loved me. I, I would tell my wife, I said, mom, it's so loving. And I should literally say, folks, I should literally say to myself, my mother-in-law is so loving. I never said it to you, Mom, your face, but I'm letting you know you're so loving. And um, I would think in my head, man, she's loving. And I would even say to myself, boy, do I wish I could love like her. That's the kind of effect she's had on me. She's been genuine with that. And I'm so thankful for you, mom. You know, being a mother-in-law is not always easy. Some of y'all know that, right? I mean, sometimes the relationship can become unpleasant. The relationship between your, your child and their spouse, it could make you unpleasant as a mother-in-law. It could make you want to say some things that you shouldn't say, it can make you do some things you shouldn't do. But I'm gonna tell you, based on how I've seen my mother-in-law respond, love is the answer. No, what, no matter what happens in the relationships, as mama, love is always the answer. That keeps things in perspective and it keeps things steady. So I am so thankful for my mother-in-law. She has been such a loving person. So as moms, as mother-in-laws, I just want to encourage you. Um, in those hard times, my wife and I, we have eight children, and me and my wife said early on, when our children get married, unless we were invited to talk about things, we don't get in their business. That's so much, that's so important because when you get into you, your in-law's business like that, that can create problems. But I'm so thankful for my mother-in-law. So loving. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So let's move right along. And lastly, I want to talk to, she's not technically my mother. Somebody said, hmm. But she's the mother of my, her, our children. Um, there she is. Um, Y'all know the story. I, I met Regina in high school, and <laughs> I saw her on the bus, and um, I said to myself, well, who in the world is she? I found out what block she lived on. <laughs> 
And uh, I told my, my buddy, I said, hey, man, I mean, let me use your bike. I need to go see so-and-so on this, on this corner here. And so I got this bike, and um, I got on the block, and my friend who I got the bike from, his next-door neighbor, whose name was Regina, was walking down the street, and I saw her. I'm on the bike. I said, hey, Regina, you know Regina Allen, where she lives? She said, you're standing right in front of her house. <laughs> and uh, so Regina has always been a blessing to me. Um, my wife and I had, actually she got pregnant in the first year after our marriage. And we got married in September, in that year she got pregnant. And then she had a miscarriage after five months. That was devastating to my wife. And I would encourage her. I would say, sweetheart, don't worry. We're going to have twins. <laughs> we had twins, all right. <laughs> we had a bunch of them. And so, <laughs> you might as well say, my wife has given birth to eight children. She really had ten. She had two miscarriages. And um, within the span, we, once again, we waited to three years later after she had the miscarriage. Within the span of, of um, uh, 20 years or so, from 20 to 40, uh, are the ages of our kids. So my youngest is 20, my oldest, Stephanie, who's sitting here, she'll be 40 soon. And that's like, wow. It's a blessing to have a wife that would give you so many children. And um, I just remember the days uh, when she was young and her, 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 mo her mothering, and I, I remember a couple things. And I, I remember when she would call me on the job and she would tell me how frustrated she was as a mother because babies take up all your time. Can I get a witness? So once again, can you imagine Adam trying to tend the garden with some babies? That wasn't going to happen. That garden would be weeds. But she would call me some time and she would share with me some times as a young mother how frustrated she would be. She wanted to keep the house clean. <laughs> Little Stephanie running around the house. She wanted to keep the house clean. And so God gave me the grace and wisdom just to tell us, sweetheart, don't worry about it. Let the house go. You nap when the baby nap. When the baby gets up, you get up, you take care of the baby. Whatever's got to be done in the house, let it go. But one thing I learned as a young man with mama. Once mama got a baby, you got a baby. And let me say this. One of the things I learned as a young man, I had to really learn it good, and I'm still learning, is in the area of serving your wife. That's kind of a foreign thing in many places. I learned real quick if this thing don't work, you got to serve. So I had to grow up. I had to, as a young man, uh, I had to grow up. Yes, I had a job. I had things to do and doing things at church. You know what I'm saying? You got things in ministries you're doing in church, and, but you got to take care of mama. So I had to learn how to be a servant. I, re I, re I remember this story. We lived out in Park Forest. And uh, we lived in a co-op, and um, as we were out there for a while, you know, I used to take the train, but they had a bus service that would run us from Park Forest all the way downtown, because I worked downtown. And um, I remember one day getting off the bus, coming from work, and I had to go to the bathroom, y'all. <laughs> so I'm rushing, I'm, I'm getting home, I get home, I open the door, and there's one bathroom in the house. 
One. I shoot up the stairs to the bathroom, close the door, open the toilet. Guess what was in the toilet bowl? One of them soiled cough diapers. You see, my wife didn't believe in using the, you know, those uh, disposables. She wanted to make sure the kids didn't get rash, and uh, we thoroughly understood. And I ran in there. Oh, my goodness, I got to go to the bathroom. I learned how to serve. <laughs> I learned how to serve. I had to learn as a young man how to make my wife a priority. And brothers, let me say this. Mamahood is just not for mama. Mamahood is also for daddy. Whether you live with the child or not, mamahood is just not for mama. If you want to see your wife grow up like a fruitful vine, your children like olive plants, guess what? We got to serve. And it's like lifting weights. You know how it is. You go to the gym, you lift weights. You know, you're trying to get some, some of that muscle pumped up. Sometimes it's tight and sometimes it's hard. But if you keep doing it for a while, you add the weights. Before you know it, you got some strong muscles. And if you keep at it, you can sustain, sustain those muscles. But that's what servants are like. Serving is like that. Sometimes it's hard, <laughs> but if you keep serving, it gets better. Matter of fact, you begin to like it, but you got to keep going with it. And I learned as a young man, it is so important, young men, older men too, it's so important to serve your wife. You would do so much better by doing that. But Regina and I, Really, we grew up together raising children. I mean, there were things that we, we learned together. You know, as a mom, you know, I, I began to really understand how this thing worked with a woman I lived with, and she had my child. And um, as, as I was saying, uh, my wife would, would, would say to me sometimes, you know, um, man, it just seemed like I just can't get anything done. You know, sometimes... I come home, and sometimes she'd be in her pajamas. And you know how we as men, we were like, I've been working all day. You got your pajamas on? Yeah. So, and so I come home, and, and she began explaining to me. She says, it seems like I can't get nothing done. So I says, you ever been there before? I just can't get anything done. And mind you, y'all, we got eight, so we, we, we had some kids pretty fast. And so I thought about it, and the Lord gave it to me, and talked to her. I said, sweetheart, um, there's something you got to do. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you two words, two words. The first word is early. Can you say that with me? Early. The second word is early. Can you say that with me? <laughs> early. Okay? So... I share with my wife, I said, sweetheart, I know it's difficult, but what would be helpful for you if that in the morning you get up real early before your kids do? <laughs> See, you get up real early with your kids, before your kids do. There's no other way, unless you got helpers. Get early, real early before your kids do. Have a devotion. <laughs> Sounds so Christian, doesn't it? Have a devotion. Spend time with God. Talk to him. Have your prayer time. Take your shower. Get dressed for the day. Eat your food. And then you wake them up. <laughs> and guess who's got the date in? <laughs> so my wife did that. My wife would get up early, and it helped her so much with lots of kids. Second thing we did together, we decided that when it was time to go to bed, our children went to bed early. <laughs> That's serious, y'all. It ain't easy getting kids down early. So we decided that we would get our kids in the bed by 7.30. Remember that, Stephanie? 
<laughs> they didn't want to go to bed. We were like, yeah, 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 you're the bed. And that gave Regina and myself time to chill, time to talk, time to get our brains back on straight. Me coming from work, coming home. Because, brothers, let me say, when you go to work and your mama's and your wife's at home, that's your case. What happens is that you think that working the job is your, the day is done when you're done with the job. I learned quickly, that's half the job. The other half is walking in the door and she needs your help. And so we had time to chill, to actually rest. And so me and mama got a chance to chill out. Baby's in the bed. And uh, that was a good thing. So remember, early and early. Second of all, my wife was shared to me, you, how many of your sisters ever have an issue with like, what am I going to cook today? Or your kids wake you up and, mama, you mean you sleep and they pull your eyes up. Mama, what's your breakfast? You're like, oh, no. You know what I mean? Kids can do that to you. That's, that's, the kids can do that to you. So my wife was sharing with me about it. This is another time. I said, well, sweetheart, I think this might help us. I says, why don't you make a menu? And so she did. She made a menu of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So if the kids came to her and asked her, mom, what's for dinner? All she had to say is, did you look at the menu? That help, that order, that sense of direction for children, because with young children, they can be very, very demanding. Our time is getting short. I've got to bring this thing home. The last thing I want to say to you, sisters, is this. And uh, Keanu, you were right on it. I'm so glad to hear about uh, Roots. Um, one of the things that I believe is really important as mothers, whether you're young, middle-aged mother, or whatever, it's very important as moms that you discover who you are. But let me explain a little bit. Yes, you are a mother, but that's not all you are. You are if you know Christ, you're a child of God. You've been given some giftings. You've been given some particular yearnings and desires in your heart. And it's important that as a mother, though you have many things to do, I mean, you're taxing your kids around, you're taking on these games, and you're doing this and that, but mothers, don't forget who you are. Take time, and, and that means as husbands, we need to be sensitive as well to the needs of our wives as a whole person. You're a mother, but you're also a woman. And there's many other things that God wants you to do. My wife would tell me, uh, matter of fact, at this church, there was a program called MOPS. Anybody used to come to MOPS around here? Well, MOPS is called Mothers of Preschoolers. And in this room, I remember my wife used to come, and I would come home, and she would tell me all about the stuff in MOPS. This doctor spoke. This nurse spoke. And it totally expanded her as a mom. And then she got involved with this group called Mocha Moms. Remember Mocha Moms? Mocha Moms was a group about uh, African-American women who also had kids and were professional women. And sometimes Regina would come back and say, man, I don't, I don't feel, you know, like I measure up being around all these professional women. And I looked at my wife. I says, honey, do you know what you got to offer? I said, I know what you got to offer. And so she kept meeting with them and helped out. But my wife began to find her space outside of being a mother. One of the things Regina used to do, she used to um, build crafts. I mean, she's very, very crafty. And we would have craft shows we would go to, and she would sell them. And then a big thing happened is we got involved through a series of events of this company called Shackley. And when we got involved with this company, Regina took off. I don't know if any of you all know, but Regina is a salesperson. If she believes in it, she'll get you to buy it. 
She ain't ashamed to talk about nobody. I had never known that about her, but her gift of who she was, it came out of her. She can involve with this company. Before you know it, we're, we're flying down to San Francisco, California, because we moved up to a certain standard. And, and then before you know it, you know, we were looking for a new van, and we were wondering, how are we going to get this new van? And she went to a meeting, and one of the guys said to her, have you ever checked out your points to see whether or not you qualify for a van? And she did that. Found out we qualify for a van, y'all. <laughs> and the money she was making out of Shackley, pay for it. You see, God provided to us through her giftings. And God's going to use you through your giftings. And later on in life, anybody know? Some of y'all know my wife wants to start selling jewelry. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. She could talk it. I used to love to sit and see my wife do presentations. She could talk it. Sisters, you got gifts. Don't sit on them. I know your mother, you're busy, but don't forget about yourself. God has gifts in you that he wants you to use in talents. And lastly, um, there's a small group here. I think Katrina headed it up, right? A painting small group. And uh, my wife got involved, and she, they did some painting about... I don't know if it's Hawaii or what, but, you know, since we're moving to Costa Rica, we said, you know, we're going to call that Costa Rica on that painting. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what island it was, but that's what I called it. So she um, got started, and before I know it, Regina is online, taking drawing classes. <laughs> Can you go to the next slide, please? Now... It's a little crooked because I had to get the lighting. Those are pictures of my, myself, my wife, and all our siblings, our kids. My wife drew every last picture. That's a talent that she had as a little kid, but it was dormant. Some of you all got talents in you as mothers, and they're sitting dormant. Unleash them. Let them out. Discover don't become old and, and just be, just you stop. God wants you to do some things with your life as well. Amen? So, but before um, I close out here, I got to say something real quickly. Sweetheart, could you come here? <laughs> this is my lovely wife, Regina. I've never said this publicly, but, you know, you all weren't around when we were raising all those little kids. <laughs> y'all seems, you know, we got grandkids now, but y'all weren't around. But sweetheart, I want to say to you, thank you. I want to thank you for being the mom to our children. I want to thank you for all that taxi driving you did. <laughs> I want to thank you for getting up early, and I want to thank you Lord, all for all those um, breakfast, and then you had lunch when they came home. My wife had lunch for my kids when they came home. <laughs> and you would make those wonderful dinners. I mean, my wife would do stuff like make Miss Fields cookies. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you, sweetheart, for the labor that you did. Your labor was not in vain, and you made our home work. I love you. My three moms. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. I thank you for my mothers. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for what you've done in their lives. Thank you for how you used them to the glory of God. I pray, God, that you will continue to strengthen them, encourage them in the things of God. We thank you for each one. In Christ's name, amen.